When the uh, Obama administration was strong-arming Senate Democrats to save its Iran's deal, many promises were made. Central to the White House storyline was the President's claim that sanctions on Iran for terrorism, sanctions on Iran for human rights and ballistic missiles will continue to be fully enforced. As many will recall, Treasury Secretary Liu said unequivocally that Iranian banks will not be able to clear U.S. dollars through New York, hold correspondent account relationships with U.S. financial institutions, or enter into financing agreements or arrangements with U.S. banks. He testified, and I quote, Iran, in other words, will continue to be denied access to the world's largest financial and commercial market. But unfortunately, the administration's words have not mar matched its actions. The administration has meekly responded to Iran's provocative acts. Thanks in part to the weak UN Security Council language it agreed to on ballistic missiles. And just one Iranian has been sanctioned for human rights abuses since negotiations began. Just one. Indeed, last month, a top Treasury official publicly proclaimed that non-nuclear sanctions would undermine the Iran agreement. That's the opposite of what the committee was told. If Iran objects, the administration bends over backwards to accommodate. Effectively, the supreme leader now holds the veto pen over future congressional action. Iran will keep pushing until the Obama administration stops rolling over. Congressional pressure may have knocked the administration off their plans for now to allow, to allow Iran access to the U.S. dollar, which is the world's top currency, but the administration refuses to rule out a future move. And in the meantime, it is actively working other angles to push new investment into the Iranian economy. Secretary Kerry is in Europe this week taking the odd step of reassuring open for business. Other administration officials go so far as to say that Iranian economic growth is in our national security interest. That's a tough case to make when you consider that Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps has been labeled Iran's most powerful economic actor. And it was labeled so by the U.S. Treasury Department. That's the terrorist IRGC that they're talking about. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps is Iran's most powerful economic actor, according to our Treasury Department. The reality, though, is that the administration pep talks to international companies to spur investment in Tehran will be viewed skeptically. For investment is like a rope. It can't be pushed into a country that is corrupt, that holds international businessmen hostage, that launches missiles marked Israel must be wiped out. Rather, it is pulled into countries that are transparent, that respect contracts, and don't threaten their neighbors. Banks want maximum certainty, and that just won't be found in a country that ranks 130 of 168 on Transparency International's Corruption Index. And as we will hear today, a CEO's understanding of their company's reputational risk is more powerful than any sanction Congress could write. An international banker doesn't want to end up on the wrong side of a transaction, which unwittingly funnels money to Iran's ballistic missile program. And the designation of the entire territory of Iran as a primary money laundering concern, and that's the way we designate it, means just that any financial transaction with Iran risks supporting the regime's ongoing illicit activities. Many of the restrictions left on Iran are intended to protect our financial markets from such abuse. The international organization charged with countering money laundering worldwide declared this year that it is, quote, exceptionally concerned about Iran's failure to address the risk of terrorist financing 
and the serious threat this poses to the integrity of the international financial system." Unquote. That is why my legislation to prohibit the administration from allowing the U.S. dollar to be used to facilitate trade transactions with Iran and which upholds Iran's designation as a primary money laundering concern is so key. Iran is still the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism. Until it stops funding terror, until it stops the illicit weapons program, it should be treated like the global menace it is. I now turn to the ranking member for any opening comments he may have on our hearing today.